Have you ever heard about the straight curve? Not the usual diagonal, just like this. Well, today is the day. Today I'm going to show you how you can control the amount of light of any area that you pick in the most natural way possible without even touching the colors or by using the horizontal or the straight curve technique. It's amazing. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are again in the mysterious world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo or any other photos shown in the tutorial, you know what to do, check the links in the description. First of all, let me show you how to do it. We're going to be talking about how it works later. First, let's do it. Create a hue saturation adjustment layer first. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Now take the saturation all the way to the left, making it black and white. Now change the blend mode of the hue saturation adjustment layer from normal to soft light, just like so. Now you know curves is my favorite adjustment layer. Nothing goes without curves. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now, here's an important step. Click on this button, create clipping mask button right over there. It affects only the hue saturation adjustment layer. Take the point on the extreme left to the middle, just like so. Make sure the right hand side of the output is 128. Take this point as well, the extreme right, to the middle. Or you can simply type in 128 in the output, just like so. Now have a look at this, this is interesting. Even if I turn off the hue saturation adjustment layer, it's the same image. Even if I turn it on, it's the exact same thing, right? So if I come back to the curves properties, if it's not open for you, you can just double click on the symbol to open up the properties of the curves. For example, you want to brighten this area. Let's just zoom into the image. You want to brighten this area. You would select the hand tool right over there. Click on this one and brighten it. You want to darken this area or maybe just brighten this area. Click and take it up. Just like so. Maybe you want to darken the extreme highlights again. You can just take it down like that. Let's have a look at the before and after. The before and after doesn't matter, but I want you to understand the concept over here. Here's the before. Here's the after. We can easily control the brightness of any area that we wish. You can also work this way. Just zoom in. If you want to just decrease the brightness of the highlights, so the right hand side represent the highlights and the left hand side represent the shadows. We have talked about this in the curves adjustment layer guide. You can watch it right here. So if you want to just make the highlights darker, you would just decrease the right hand side. You would take it down. If you want to increase the shadows, you would take it up. Maybe you want to do something with the midtones. You want to just bump up the midtones as well. So you can create complex curves over here. And none of it, none of it will affect the colors. Have a look at it. Here's the before, here's the after. Colors are not affected at all. Oh, this is super amazing. Let me show you another example. So here we are in our second example. And if you think the process is too complicated and long, just go to the description of the video and download an action. It does it automatically for you. So all you have to do is to go to window and then actions. Now, I have made this action available for you to download. Just click on the horizontal curve action and play it. It does everything for you. Let's close it. All you have to do, double click on the symbol of the curves, adjustment layer, and then start adjusting. Maybe you want to make the roads more shinier. Just zoom in with the help of the hand tool right over there. Just click and drag it up to make it brighter. But other areas are becoming brighter as well. We don't want that to happen. We want to darken this area. So click and drag it down just like so. As easy as that. Have a look at the before and after. None of the colors have been affected. So here is the before. Let me just put it somewhere. All right. So here is the before and here is the after. You can also mask it if you want to. Click on the mask. Maybe you want to create a gradient. So I'll choose a gradient and I'll choose this gradient right over there. It creates a gradient in the middle. Click on that one and maybe just like this. Or let's drag it like that. So it's just in the middle, a little bit of it, add some brightness to the sky and shine on the roots. Isn't that amazing? Now it's done. You can stop watching the video right now. That's how to do it. I've given you the action and that's it. But if you really want to learn how it works and understand the concept behind it, Keep watching because here's the thing. Once you understand the concepts, you can come up with thousand tricks of your own. And that's how I've come up with a lot of videos like that. Just keep it a secret. All right. So here is how it works. We need to first of all understand the concept of soft light and overlay blend modes. Have a look at this. If I create a new layer, if I 
take the branch, all right? And if I take 50% gray as the foreground color, so let's take 808080 hex code for 50% gray, hit okay. And if I paint something right over here, okay? And if I change the blend mode from normal to overlay, it becomes absolutely invisible. Even if I choose soft light, it is invisible, right? Now let's take it back to normal. Now if I put it back to black, and let's say I decrease the flow to somewhere around 11%, and if I start painting like this, just like that, all right? And change the blend mode back again from normal to overlay. Have a look at this. Everything which was 50% gray just vanished. Have a look at this again. If I change the blend mode back to normal and I paint with white, right, which is brighter than 50% gray, just like that, and change the blend mode to overlay back again, gray hides. But let me show you something interesting. Everything that was brighter than gray, those areas have become brighter. Everything that was darker than 50% gray, those areas have become darker. Let me make it more evident for you. If I create a gradient, create a new layer and simply create a gradient just like this, right? And in this gradient, at the top, we have white and at the bottom, we have black. If I change the blend mode from normal to overlay, let's have a look at this. The middle will be normal, but look at the top. The top has been brightened and the bottom has been darkened. So 50% gray will hide. Anything which is brighter than 50% gray, those areas will be brightened. Anything which is darker than 50% gray, those areas will be darkened. So this is how it works. What if we can use this concept to control the brightness of different areas of the image? I think we can. Let's start by making a copy of the background layer. Select the background layer and then press Ctrl or Command J. First of all, we don't want to change the colors. So let's desaturate it. Go to Image, Adjustments, and then Desaturate. So this does not have any colors. Now, if I change the blend mode from normal to overlay, it's kind of making the darks very dark and the brights very bright. Is there a way in which I can make this absolutely gray to begin with? Well, there is. Let me show you how. If I change the blend mode back to normal again, and if I create a curves adjustment layer, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now, we want the curves adjustment layer to only affect this layer, which is layer one. So click on this button, which is create clipping mask button, or you can simply hold the Alt or option and click on the line between these two layers. Now, if you take the extreme left point up, the shadows become brightened, right? Take it more up, the shadows become absolutely brightened to the middle because you want to make it gray. If you also want to make the highlights gray, you bring the highlights down. So you take the shadows up to make it gray, you take the highlights down to make it gray. So once you bring it at 128 exact position, let me just dial it in, make sure this is 128 as well. Have a look, it's absolutely gray. So when there is something which is absolutely gray and we change the blend mode to soft light, what will happen? It will completely hide. Now, let's change it back to normal and let's see what happens when we change the curves. So here we are in the curves. Suppose we wanna make the highlights a little brighter. So when we do something like this, when we take it up and then we take the shadows down, Look at how it's creating a light map, which if we change the blend mode to soft light, will directly affect the light of that particular area. So that my friend is how it works. If you wanna make the effect more extreme, you can also choose overlay. It just makes it more extreme. Now you can do the same thing. You'll have to be more careful with this because it's not as subtle as soft light. Now you might be wondering why the heck did I use hue saturation instead of a layer copy. Here's why. Let's have a look at this. For example, you made some changes like this, made some extreme changes, right? And you made a copy of the background layer, Control or Command J, and you changed something in this, maybe a liquify. So go to filter, liquify, and let's say you moved a couple stuff. Let's say you just nudged her a little bit. Maybe you nudged this thing a little inside with the forward warp tool right over there. Let's make it bigger like that. You changed a couple things and you hit okay. Now there will be an issue. Have a look at this. See, 
this thing is coming from that copy, right? The copy is not changing according to the changes I make below it. We want it to be non-destructive, right? Anything we do, we have to just make a copy again, create a curves adjustment layer again. That will be hectic. So instead of making a copy, we create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Here is why. Let's delete all of these. If we simply create a hue saturation adjustment layer, all right, and if we change the blend mode, and this is just for demonstration, if we change the blend mode to let's say multiply, right? Have a look at the kind of look it's creating. If I just turn it off, if I just simply make a copy of this and change the blend mode to multiply, it's the exact same look, isn't it? Which teaches us that these adjustment layers create a virtual copy inside them. And then they adjust those virtual copies. So if we change the layers beneath an adjustment layer, it keeps on changing. So why not create a hue saturation adjustment layer which will create a virtual copy of it and also we can decrease the saturation at the same time, right? So let's change the blend mode back to soft light and then we do the usual stuff, curves adjustment layer, clipping mask and bring it to the middle just like that and you can adjust it in any which way you want. Brighten up the highlights, darken the shadows and maybe brighten up the extreme shadows just like that. Have a look at this, this is amazing. So here's the before, here's the after. So you can mold it any which way you want and it's always gonna be subtle if you use soft light. So that's how my friend, you can use the straight curve technique and the concept behind it. If you really wanna do it fast, make sure to download the action, don't forget about it. Just a quick little recap. All you have to do is to create a hue saturation adjustment layer, take the saturation to minus 100, change the blend mode of the hue saturation adjustment layer to soft light, create a curves adjustment layer on top of it, create a clipping mask, make sure the curves adjustment layer just affects the hue saturation adjustment layer and then in the curves properties, make it straight, make the curves horizontal and then you can just adjust the highlight shadows and midtones, right side highlights, left side shadows. I hope I'm making sense of what I'm talking about and if I am, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one, till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.